heart of an angel. He was concerned for his own people. He had the mind of an angel. He has full of wisdom. He had the hands of an angel. He was always eager. It wasn't no problem for him to go serve tables. Not a problem at all. Then he would have the voice of an angel. He would share with the Israel people one last word for God. And it's sort of, you know, it's God had to go legalese with Stephen because this is a covenant lawsuit in chapter 7. And he's going to talk about all the ways God has led and all the ways they ignored God. And toward the end, he said, you crucified the Messiah. They couldn't handle it anymore. And they, picked, they plugged their ears, they picked up rocks, and they wanted to stone him. And we discover that even in that moment, he had the hope of an angel which is an interesting kind of thing, as I see it from the text. So he was filled with all these things. And he, what he does at the very end, he has the most famous last words of any human on earth. His most famous last words are actually a prayer. If you were getting, I asked the kids in Sabbath school, because that was what our Sabbath school was about. If they were throwing rocks at you and they were hitting you with big rocks, um, what would you be saying in a loud voice? Ouch! But he didn't say that. He said, my, my Greek says, with a loud cry. So it's very understandable speech. He said, he said, um, don't hold, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. He had the very words of our Lord Jesus on his lips. And he said it with a loud cry. I've been fascinated lately this summer with loud cry messages. We are supposed to be a people of loud cries. We're supposed to, you know, Jesus was in front of the tomb of Lazarus and it says, he yelled with a loud cry, Lazarus come forth. And I yelled a week or two ago and I asked, was that loud enough? And someone said, yeah, no, it wasn't. He probably yelled louder. My question was, who would you yell for? Who do you want to see resurrected from the dead? Who do you want to see in the kingdom of heaven? He has the hope of an angel. He's praying for the very accusers who are just so blinded by sin and Satan, they're not even really the enemy. And so he's asking God to forgive them. Mercy, forgiveness, compassion. It says he's full of grace. And that's what grace does. So my guess, I want to say, are there any angels among us? Are there people you want to seek after God for and cry mightily for? Are there people you want to go help real pragmatically, like widows and orphans? You're not too busy to wait, wait tables. And by the way, he's no lightweight theologically. He knows his Bible quite well. He read his sermon in Acts 7. He knows it, the whole story real well. He had to cut it short. So he's a person who's immersed in the, world, in the word. He's a person who ministers to the world. And he's a person who prays to God. us with people who are angelic, who have that kind of love, who are willing to share, who are willing to serve in a way, willing to come alongside and be a friend. Anyway, that's what I would ask that you pray for us. Let's pray as we finish our service today. It seems like anyone could be an angel and you don't limit. You don't limit your ability. You're not limited by our inabilities for people, even people like us, to be used to share your word. They may not be fancy words. They may not be smoothly spoken. It doesn't matter. You use them for your purposes because that's the kind of God you are. Thank you for Stephen. We know that you answered his prayer. 
there was an apostle, a future apostle, Saul, who was in agreement in his death, but became Paul when you got his attention on the Damascus Road. We know that that prayer made so happy that you were not going to that. He would have the last word in King Saul's life. He did have a heart for you, and you totally reversed and flipped him. Lord, we may have someone we need to shout for. uncertainty on multiple levels. We just want to pray that you will pour your spirit upon your church family, that we, as a church, will be full of full of wisdom, full of faithfulness, full of mercy and grace. Thank you for being our God. Go with us now as we go through this week in Jesus' name. Thank you. 